Hey guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Ford Ranger XLT. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Ranger has been Ford's compact pickup truck since 1983. It was discontinued after the third generation back in 2012 and brought back in 2019 for the fourth generation. For 2024, we get this all new fifth generation Ranger. It's a ground up all new platform with sharper looks, increased capability and two all new powerful turbocharged six cylinder options on top of the already powerful 2.3 liter EcoBoost that we have here on this 2024 Ranger XLT with a $36,000 base price. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your flickering LED daytime running lights are not actually flickering in real life. Full LED headlamps, it's a halogen turn signal up front and out rear, we'll check that out in one minute. Full LED fog light down below too. Massive Ford emblem in the front, part of the grill area with a black contrast to grill, black slash through the headlights reminding me a lot of the new F-150 styling too. Down below we get a subtle silver trim, intercooler down below with a radiator up top for this 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder turbocharged engine cranking out 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, which is the entry-level power plant for this 2024 Ranger. You can also option up to the 2.7-liter EcoBoost, which is a six-cylinder twin turbo power plant. We just reviewed that with the 2024 F-150 on this channel. And that was enough to get that truck to 60 in around six seconds, if not quicker. I could only imagine how this lighter weight Ford Ranger will be with that 2.7. And you can option up all the way to the three-liter twin turbo that we had in the Explorer ST for the top Raptor trim. Anyway. We get some gloss black trim for the wheel wheel areas. That looks really premium, especially with these beefy all-terrain tires here. They're Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrains. The dimensions are 25, 70, R17. Black rims or a very dark gunmetal gray and a six lug pattern. Large dual piston front brake caliper and plenty of ground clearance. You get the XLT logo in the corner. Let's see if it's a functional heat extractor. It does appear to be a functional heat extractor, black contrast and mirrors with blind spot monitoring on the glass. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. All black trim for the window trim, blacked out B pillars. We have this $95 optional keypad too. No smart access and we have a turn key, but it's just an XLT trim. You can option up to the higher trims and of course both will be available. Let's walk over to the opposite side. That's where the window sticker is on this 2024 Ford Ranger and we'll see what we get the $36,000 base price. All right, guys, there you go. For the 2024 Super Crew two-wheel drive XLT, 2.3 EcoBoost, carbonized gray metallic, ebony premium cloth seats, 10-speed auto, 36.1 for the base price. You guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features, options. This is just about a base model, 495 bucks for the trailer tow package and 95 bucks for that keypad that we had up front we'll take a step back hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile on this truck very aggressive we also get the sport emblem in the rear tailgate area same rear wheel and tire setup the only difference is a smaller brake caliper we still get leaf springs here on this all new generation ranger we'll see how it rides when we take it out for a drive exhaust tip the rear bumper gets full rear parking sensing that's an appreciated feature ranger etched in the tailgate backup camera ford logo shout out elder ford of tampa for helping make this review possible anyway trailer hitch i'll leave a link right here to show you exactly how much this truck can tow and the payload capability the tailgate is damp that's appreciated and we get these clamps as part of the tailgate hopefully you can pick it up on camera same thing on the opposite side with a ruler spray in bed liner i gotta knock ford for this they did not fill up this tailgate for the bed liner nearly as well as i would hope for but the actual tailgate itself very nicely sprayed in we get four or six sets of tie downs. We get one in the middle or two in the middle and two in the rear, two towards the cab. We get an additional 12 volt over here too with an AC outlet right in front of it. Very large bed too. I'll leave a link right here and show you the exact size of it. Really not a whole lot smaller than what you would get from like the F-150 or my Ram 1500. Anyway, we get full LED taillights for the brake light, but the turn signal and the reverse light both are Halogen. I mentioned the exhaust tip and speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 2.3 liter EcoBoost turbocharged four cylinder and here she sounds. All 
All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder sold by Ford for the 2024 Ranger. And it sounds okay, making a very healthy amount of power at 300 or 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission in this two wheel drive platform. You can expect zero to 60 in the low to mid six second range, making it a no joke performer. And you can expect to shave off at least a second and a half for a second off of that zero to 60 time if you go with one of the higher engine options. So Ford's really taking pride in making the quickest vehicles in their segment, at least for their trucks, whether it's the F-150 with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost compared to its competition, the Ford Maverick with a two liter turbo, especially considering that price point, and this Ranger with not only those turbocharged six cylinder options, but this beefy 2.3 liter turbo. Anyway, what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right down. No hydraulic struts. We'll see if we get them available on the higher trim models, but not available here for the XLT. You gotta really slam that hood down or it will not latch. Anyway, we'll take a step inside, see what we get. Again, no smart access, but we do get remote start on the key fob, which is an appreciated feature. But taking a step inside, we can flick this key back so the truck is not yelling at me there we go so up top we get hard plastic material with hard plastic in the center but it's a nice grain material this top portion same thing hard plastic lock and unlock four-way adjustable mirrors power folding mirrors that's appreciated we get four window auto one touch an f-150 style grab handle and a gushy soft armrest that's nice attention to detail for ford the areas that actually count nice high quality materials six speaker audio system but it sounds good with a smaller interior and a lot of storage down below easily fit in a foot long you'll fit a 24 ounce bottle but it's crooked so make sure the lid is tightly closed and um, a couple candy bars over here behind it hopefully you pick it up on camera the seats they're completely manually adjusted you can still recline drop lift adjust the lumbar control and slide back and forth and the seats are very well bolstered for cloth buckets these are some of the more comfortable ones in the segment nice supportive but wide enough to allow space for even larger drivers I mentioned we do not get push button start or smart access but it's an electronic key so all you gotta do is just give it a flick and the engine starts right up but first thing we notice from a technology perspective this is a huge improvement compared to the previous generation ranger the materials are solid they're hard plastic for the most part the dashboard's hard plastic top part of the door panel is hard plastic but the materials that you will actually be touching on a daily basis the armrest the steering wheel nice leather trim solid 10 and 2 9 and 3 feels perfect in your hands additional center spoke down below the horn area is hard plastic the horn really loud and aggressive we'll do a window check see if we get dual panes we don't get dual panes we'll see if we get them on the higher trims but not available on the xlt on the left side we have a cruise control settings lane keep assist volume controls voice commands on the right side we can skip our songs hang up and answer the phone calls and adjustments for the infotainment speaking of the infotainment we get the eight inch standard digital gauge display and a 10.1 inch standard vertically illuminated touchscreen there is an available 10 inch digital gauge display on the higher trims or on the higher option packages and a 12 point four inch touchscreen but personally this is more than enough tech for me especially considering we're keeping that price after destination under thirty eight thousand bucks you get a lot of tech and a lot of performance for the money remember seventy five hundred pounds of max towing and eighteen hundred pounds of max payload for the two-wheel drive models the turn signal stocks have a really satisfying click to it no auto headlamps or auto high beams wouldn't be expected on xlt the adjustments for this infotainment screen apparently the driver door is open you got to really slam these doors to close them seat belt information digital speedo lane keep assist and a song is going to be playing with the compass right up top we can adjust between menu my view trip and fuel off-road gauges tow information and audio we also get phone nav settings and the vehicle maintenance let's check out this off-road screen you can see the vehicle gauges you see your boost gauge oil pressure and transmission temperature beneath that you have your engine hours idle hours and the oil life we check out our other screens my personal favorites look at at all times would probably just be my view or trip and fuel and under trip and fuel i would leave it under fuel economy cool we also have a coolant temperature on the left side and fuel gauge all the way to the right to the left the steering wheel tilt and telescoping steering wheel we get our in bed light interior brightness and auto headlamps as you mentioned the air vents have this funky hexagonal design i like it I mentioned the hard plastic dashboard the 10.1 inch touchscreen is large with sync 4 really high resolution the response is excellent wireless apple car plan android auto we get sketch we've 
demonstrate that in many of the other Ford videos. The touchscreen or the map itself is really high resolution with excellent response, just like an iPhone. Huge thumbs up to Ford for their sync system. While leaving the vent controls and temperature adjustments as hard buttons, not something you're seeing with these new high-tech vehicles, especially with the massive screens. We'll see if the 12.4 inch screen retains that. Beneath that, we get our wireless phone charging pad, USB-A and C port, a little bit of additional storage. The gear slider controls are 10 speed automatic transmission. We check out the backup camera real quick. The problem with these vertical displays is you can't illuminate the backup camera vertically. So you're only really using about a third of the screen, but it's still a really high resolution with guidance lines and trajectory. You can check out the different overall displays and an over the top trailer hitch display too. Remember, we also have rear parking sensing, which we can disable. Throwing right back in the park, and we'll return back to our map. That's appreciated. We get manual shift controls, electronic parking brake, Turn off the auto engine start stop, the drive mode selector. Let's see our drive modes. We get normal, eco, sport, tow haul, and slippery mode. We'll start the review off in normal, try out eco, try out sport, and you'll see what the differences are. And we can turn off the traction control. Not quite sure what this is, if this is a bracket or like a shot glass holder. I really hope that's not what it is. But it is available behind your two cup holders, which will fit 24 ounce water bottles. Leather stitch armrest, which is gushy soft. Storage space is solid. You'll fit about 10, 12 ounce cans in there with an additional 12 volt as well. The glove box, we get this artificial top tier. You'll probably fit five or six pairs of socks in there. And this actual glove box, which isn't damped, you'll fit about 25 license plates, probably fit two pairs of shoes. We get an auto dimming rear view mirror, but it's not frameless. The interior lights in here are LED. Cool, sunglass holder, no moonroof. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat of this 2024 Ford Ranger XLT. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. So since we didn't have soft touch materials up top, up front, it's not expected out rear. But we still get that gushy soft armrest, F-150 style latch, auto one touch window, which is currently locked, and a ton of storage down below. Additional one of your six speakers, the rear seats, are not very well bolstered, but they feel soft and comfy. They're well bolstered for the bottom part, just not the back. The seats lift up, you pull latch, and it lifts up as one piece with solid storage. You got your jack, fix it flat kit, and a much larger storage compartment on the opposite side. Dropping the seat back, let's see how much space is offered back here. No grab handle, so the shorter passengers may have a little bit of a tougher time hopping back here. But once you're back here, it's pretty spacious. You get three, four inches of knee room, head room, about an inch and a half. So if you're under 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, you should be able to fit behind your seat settings in the 2024 Ranger with no problem. No air vents that blow directly into your face. There is something going on under the front seats, but again, nothing that blows right at our face. USB-A and C port and a 120 volt, 400 watt AC outlet down below. We get map pockets behind the passenger seat, no map pocket behind the driver's seat. Center cubby has a rope. You can open it up, two cup holders, you'll fit 16 ounce bottles with a cloth stitched armrest. Nice, the interior lights back here are also LED and we get grab handles with hooks for both of the rear passengers. The fifth window, it's not an auto opening, you gotta do it manually. So without a backseat passenger, it's gonna be really tough for you to open that while driving. Anyway, that's about it though guys, for the inside and outside of this 2024 Ford Ranger XLT. And it is a really impressive vehicle for basically standard equipment. We get these beefy all-terrain tires, sport package, black contrasted everything, full LED headlamps, LED brake lights, and a really high-tech interior with a powerful 2.3 liter turbocharged EcoBoost four-cylinder engine. And speaking of that, let's take this 2024 Ford Ranger XLT out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Ford Ranger XLT. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. Looks like this guy's letting me go. You should be good, cool. And taking a step out of here, good response through the gas pedal. Ride quality is okay. Feels a little bit more jolty than an F-150, but it also feels a lot more comfortable than it did for the previous generation. The steering feels nice and on center. We're just in normal mode. Quiet interior, even with just single pane windows. Taking a step out here. Yeah, the steering feels really well weighted. About third throttle. 
boost, good torque. Nice, you hear a little blow off when you let go of the gas too. Yeah, the all-terrain tires definitely help the ride quite a little bit. I'm not quite sure if that's what's helping compared to the previous Ranger I reviewed or if they actually made significant tweaks to the suspension. Either way, this feels very solid. Quiet, you don't hear the tread blocks from the all-terrains. Big bumps. Yeah, I mean, you definitely feel them a little bit, but you really don't hear them. The isolation with the bumps is very solid. More bumps. Doesn't upset the chassis at all. It almost doesn't feel like this is a truck with leaf springs. It does have a little bit more of a stiff suspension feel, but it doesn't have that traditional bounce that you're used to feeling with leaf springs. The brakes have a pretty squishy feel. Definitely requires a decent amount of pedal to get the vehicle to slow down, but it doesn't mean the brakes are bad. It just means the pedal is tuned in a way that it doesn't beat you up too badly. Taking a step out here, lean into it about halfway oh wow yeah when that boost really kicks in this thing can take off and with a 10-speed transmission this 2.3 liter turbocharged four-cylinder it gets in that rev range and that power band really quickly we could throw it into sport mode see what changes up real quick steering immediately gets a little bit heavier throwing it in Nice feel, low body roll on the gas. Oh yeah. Oh man, holy crap. That is a lot quicker than I expected. That doesn't feel a whole lot slower than the 2.7 we just reviewed in the F-150, and that's supposed to be a sub six second zero to 60. This doesn't feel a whole lot off of that. Let's slow down a little bit. Try a moving pull on the gas. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on a 2.7 or even a 3.0. This thing moves. The manual shift controls here are on the steering wheel. Let's try a moving pull from third. Wow. That boost kicks in at a low RPM and it seriously, seriously takes off. We don't have to beat it up a whole lot further. Let's throw it into Eco Pro mode and we can wrap things up. Yeah, in Eco Pro mode, the throttle is way less sensitive, but the boost still kicks in and it gives you a very strong feel. So for daily driving, unless you're planning on showing off to your friends, I'd recommend just leaving it in Eco Pro. It'll help you get closer to like the 21, 22 combined MPGs. Otherwise, you'll be a little bit closer to 18, 19, which is still fine considering this truck can pull over 7,000 pounds and can carry over 1,700 pounds. With 4x4, it's about 1,700 for the XL. It's a little bit lower with the XLT and the added goodies. And with um, two-wheel drive, I believe it's 1,800 pounds. Either way, that is seriously impressive. Overall, guys, if you're looking for a new truck or just a new practical vehicle in general, you don't like sloppy handling, you don't like rough, loud ride quality, and you don't like overly expensive. You need something on the quick side. You need something that looks not only premium, but carries the tech that you want. This is an unbelievable option. At 37,000 bucks, 36,000 bucks for the base price, you get an unbelievable value when it comes to a balance of tech, performance, and capability. I mean, zero to 60 in around six seconds. You get this 10 inch touchscreen, eight inch digital gauge display. It truly is a loaded, loaded vehicle. No, we don't have power seats, they're not leather. You're not getting every possible creature comfort if that's what you want. Go up to the higher trims and I guarantee that it'll be a lot more of a premium feel compared to this XLT. But if you're looking to save thousands and thousands of dollars while still keeping good performance, great capability, and very solid looks and tech, I would 1,000% recommend checking out a 2024 Ford Ranger XLT. And a big thanks to Elder Ford in Tampa, Florida for help make this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. 
Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.